Hi, I'm James Catherall, and today we're going to be ranking every single software instrument inside of Logic Pro. Got a tier list here in front of me, goes from S all the way down to F. S being the best means it's superior, it's the very top. F meaning it's all the way down there, it's not very great, probably not very useful, and you won't put it in your projects very often. I'm going to go through every single one of them for the most part in alphabetical order, talk about them a little bit, and then drop them in their ranking. Number one is Alchemy, starting off with a banger. So let's bring it up inside of Logic Pro. Got it right here. This one is a fantastic one. It's basically like an Omnisphere, like light version. It's got a whole bunch of presets, 3,632 different presets, but it's got all of these categories here on the side. So I can go through different things if maybe I wanna do like a soundscape and I want it to be evolving and I want it to be ambient. And now I've gone down to 302 presets. And I can scroll through some of these, pick them, see what they sound like. Let's go here. Ooh, super interesting. Like that one a lot. So now we can rate them. So now I can give this one five stars, but maybe let's go back to that one. I, I didn't like that one so much. I'm gonna give that one two stars. And now I can go here and tap where it says rating. And now it's gonna change their rankings based off of my own personal ratings. So you can create your own curated list over time. Super awesome. It's got this other thing down here where you can change the presets. Like maybe if I go back to this bowed metal space, I can do this. And as I go through these, you can see it changes the sound. It tweaks a whole bunch of different knobs and effects to give me slightly different sounds makes it super awesome. And that's just the easy browse area. We can go into the advanced, do a whole bunch of stuff in there, really deep plugging. You could probably spend like 12 hours on all different videos, deep diving into alchemy, just to learn about it and what you can do with it. Super easy, S tier, alchemy is great. If you don't use it very much, you should really deep dive into it. It's amazing. Drum kit designer, it's loaded up inside of Logic. This is sort of like a live recording of different drum kits that you can use inside of your projects when you want that live acoustic drum kit sound. It's got a whole bunch of different drum kits. The thing that's great about it, you have a bunch of different kick drums you can pick from. So I can change these. I could do the same thing with the snare drum. We got different snare drums, shallow shells and deep shells. We got all the different cymbals and the toms. Other great thing about it is you can tune and dampen and change the volume of each individual piece of the drum kit. Even just the individual pieces of the toms is I can tune each of these, change the dampening, really great. And that's just one drum kit. I can go to the presets and it's got a whole bunch of different drum kits with a whole bunch of different kick drums. So a lot of choices to choose between to really give you that correct acoustic drum kit sound that you want for that project. I feel like this is easy. I'm gonna call this one A tier. So two really solid starts, let's go on from here. So let's talk about the drum synth. I'm gonna open it up right here. So rather than being acoustic drum kits like the other one, this is all electric drums that you can load in when you want that more electric drum type of sound on your track. The only thing that's a drawback about it is that it only does one instrument at a time. So it creates cool sounds. So there's a kick drum, we have different kick options and we can also change all these parameters to really dial in that sound that we want. It's got different sounds here. Here's a snare drum sound. It's cool and it's interesting. The only problem is if you want a full drum kit or electric drum kit, you need a whole bunch of tracks in your project to be able to put that together. I would call this a really solid C tier. It's like really middle of the road, not super awesome. It can create some cool sounds, but not the most useful of plugins. Let's check out FM synth, loading this one up. This is a FM synthesizer. This is kind of like a, a category. There's a few different synths in Logic that are definitely a bit dated at this point, that this looks like an interface from like the 80s or the 90s. When you look at it, it's not super modern and clean and fun to look at, but still can do a lot of useful things. One of the great ones I like about this is the FM bass. You can create some really cool bass lines, especially with like the house bass, one of my favorite presets. Definitely one of my favorite presets to really create like a moving, driving baseline in my projects. With that, let's give FM Synth a nice B tier. You know, kind of, kind of a good spread right now. I like FM Synth, it does some cool things, but it really only gives you that sort of like bass sound or FM Synth. Not a whole wide range of stuff you can do with it, but still useful when you want that type of sound. Ensemble Synth. This is another one in that category where it has that similar interface, pretty dated. 
not a whole lot of things on here and also you can see with it like it doesn't scale very well if you make it really big everything gets all pixely and gross and if you bring it down then it's really hard to read another one that there's not a whole lot of stuff to do with this it works really well if you do like if i go here it works well to create those like 80s synth pad kind of things like like those types of sounds works really well Outside of that, not, not a whole lot of awesome things. I mean, it's got those chorus and ensemble effects, which is kind of what gives it the name, is it gives you that really chorusy, thick uh, synth pad type of sound. Kind of a one trick pony type of thing, which there's a few that will go over in here that kind of had that one trick pony, is they don't really do a whole wide range of stuff. But if you want that one thing out of it, it can give you some pretty good results. Let's give ensemble synth, I'm, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna give this one a D tier. It's not really great, and there's a lot of other ones in this category that can give you better results than the ensemble synth. Monophonic synth. Next one. Same category, really dated look to it doesn't scale very well. Interface doesn't look super pretty, but this one really shines as like a synth bass type of thing. It's got a lot of presets here that kind of deal with that synth. Kind of works as a bass, gives you that similar kind of thing as a lot of these give you those sort of like old school synth sounds if that's really what you're looking for. Not, not a whole lot of stuff. It's kind of another one of those one trick ponies. With that monophonic synth, same thing. I'm gonna put these all in the D tier. Not in love with any of these. All right, polyphonic synth. Similar kind of category, still looking at these really dated old school looking synth interfaces. Can still work well with creating some synth bases. Benefit here is it has some abilities to do pads because it's polyphonic. Whereas the other one was only monophonic, has some more things, some more parameters that you can change, but overall still not super useful. And there's a lot of better options inside of Logic rather than using one of these. So with that, I'm gonna give Polyphonic same thing as we're gonna make these D tier. Let's do uh, let's do an interesting one. So we're gonna look at what's called Klopfgeist. So if you're not familiar with that, the Klopfgeist is the click track inside of Logic. So anytime you're enabling the click, it has its own instrument called the Klopfgeist. Start with an interesting little fun fact about it. So I was looking up the Klopfgeist and as I was making this video, I finally wanted to understand why is it called the Klopfgeist. And I Googled it and the first thing that comes up is it's the German word for poltergeist, which just confused me even more. That was like poltergeist with Klopfgeist and why is that a click? But then I found another page that was kind of another like more common use translation of it, that it was a disruptive ghost which I think then as soon as that came up, then it all made a whole bunch of sense. It was like, oh, a disruptive ghost. And then it was like genius, a disruptive ghost being the click track. Love it. I, th I think that's genius as soon as I found that. Editing James from the future here. So I kept looking up more things for Klopfgeist just to make more sense out of it. And I actually found another definition that just makes it even better. This newest one I found says that Klopfgeist translates into knock spirit in English. So every time I keep looking it up, it just keeps getting better. It's actually really useful. I'm gonna bring up the mixer to show it and to see it inside of the mixer track by default, it only shows you the tracks. But if you click all, then you'll see the click right here and that's our Klopfgeist. We can open that up. If we push play on it, then there's our click track. There's actually a few things you can change in here if I just leave it on. You can pull up things like tonality, or the damp, which also can't really tell right now. Let's pull up the tonality. And then I can pull up damp and you can hear how that changes the sound. You can also change the tuning of it to make it lower pitch. There's some different presets in here to make some different sounds with it. There's the plug, there's the hard tick. But the other thing that's actually kind of cool about it, if you want to play around with this and actually make something uh, musical out of it, is I can pull this all the way down. You can actually make a pretty cool kick drum out of this. If I go there, I can also turn it to mono so it's just all the same. Tune in the damping. You can do something interesting with it. And you can even add plugins to the click track itself if you want to keep changing it. You can actually make something really interesting like a kick that you can use in your actual project. Klopfgeist, I am going to give you A tier. Seems really simple and kind of silly. I mean, it's just a click track plugin, but 
It's actually really cool. I mean, some of the things we showed is you can actually make something musical out of just a click track or even just the ability to really dial in your click so it's not always just the same straightforward sound. So maybe you can change the tonality and the pitch of it so that it works better with whatever instrument you're recording just to be able to actually hear the click track. All right, we are looking at the ES1. This would be synthesizer number one inside of Logic. Still same thing, we haven't gotten out of that dated look yet. These are all pretty old school plugins inside of Logic. Um, this one's great, not a whole lot to talk about here. It's, it's a straightforward synthesizer. I don't wanna spend too much time on it because I wanna get more into Synthesizer 2, which I think is a little bit better. So this one's interesting. I mean, it at least has a unique look to it. They made it green, so it really stands out. Pretty straightforward synthesizer, nothing super special in here. Synthesizer 1, I'm gonna give you C tier. There's definitely better options. So now let's get into the good one. ES2, getting slightly more modern, doesn't instantly look like it's from the 80s. A uh, little bit more intimidating. There's a lot of parameters on here, but this is really the go-to synthesizer inside of main stage. If you wanna do synth stuff, first thing you should be looking at is the ES2. It's really a workhorse of a synthesizer. There's all different kinds of things you can do in here. All of those previous synthesizers I've talked about can basically all be covered by the ES2 instead of using one of them. It has three different waveforms that you can pick from with all these different knobs. This little triangle allows you to balance between the three oscillators that you're using to make those different sounds. You have all kinds of filters here and, and overdrive and resonance and all those things. You got some effects here with the chorus and flanger and distortion, all kinds of different things. You even have this whole matrix in the middle that allows you to do mod routing and affect things with all kinds of other stuff. So a lot of deep things in here. You've got three stock envelopes, a lot of parameters in here. This is another deep one similar to Alchemy that you could spend a lot of time learning how to use the ES2 and really getting comfortable with it. So for sure, I would say this is the go-to synthesizer of Logic. So with that, I'm gonna bring ES2, let me call that S tier. Fantastic, really useful synthesizer. All right, looking at the vocoder. It's actually really cool that this comes stock with Logic because you get your own vocoder to be able to create interesting sounds and textures and it's all just right there built in. I'm actually really happy with this vocoder. I've used it quite a bit and it, I've looked around at some other vocoders that exist outside of Logic, it's like third party ones. And I still end up going back to this one a lot because it's really useful if you want that vocoder type of stuff. All kinds of options here. You can just use it as a synthesizer if you want, it's its own synthesizer. Or if you wanna do the vocoder, you can go here and use the vocal signal. You can side chain it. So here's where the side chaining would happen is up here at the top right. You would change where the input is coming from. And then you can do all kinds of things here of changing the range of what's happening from the vocoder, formant shifting, formant stretching. It's actually a lot of parameters in here so you can really dial in that sound. And I think that's what brings me back to it is the amount of control I have over that vocoder sound. So vocoder, let's give it a B tier. It's great, but kind of just thinking overall as plugins, it still really is just only a vocoder. So it doesn't end up getting used that much in my projects just because it's, it's a really unique plugin that is kind of hard to find a space for it in, in a wide range of projects. Next one, we're looking at the quick sampler. There's two different samplers inside of Logic. This is the quick sampler, which allows you just to drop on one audio file that you can then chop up. So it's actually really cool if you just wanna create some quick chop type of stuff. If you're trying to just do some sampling and, and you recorded a track and you wanna drop it in really quick and just chop it up on the keyboard and test some things out, this one's really great for doing that type of stuff, whether it's vocals or it is like you're, you're trying to do sampling of a track and you wanna sample it into your project and, and create a beat out of some song that you recorded. Um, this is a great go-to plugin for that. And the thing I like about it too is it has that more updated design language from Logic that I like a lot. It's really clean, it looks really modern, it's not overly busy, it just gives you the things that you need and lets you get in there quickly with what you want to do. So quick sampler, give you an A. I like that one a lot. All right, we're looking at the Retro Synth. This is another one of my favorites. Great synthesizer just because of the wide range of things it can do. It's got analog, sync, table, and FM synthesis all in one. And these are all kind of emulating old school, classic, really popular synthesizers that were used all through the 80s and the 90s. So really fun, a lot of things you can get into with this. It can create a wide range of stuff. We've got leads and pads and 
bass and strings and all these different things that you can create just from this one plugin. The other thing that's great about it is the interface is really clean and easy to get into. It does have that skeuomorphic sort of design to it where it is supposed to look like a hardware synthesizer like you would actually be playing with and have the tactile knobs. That makes it really inviting and intriguing to want to use it and create things with it because it does feel like you're actually playing with a real hardware synthesizer. So really great one, really fun one just to toy around with and mess with the different knobs and see what you can create with it. Retro synth, I'm giving you S tier just because you're so fun and so it's like, it, it like invites you to create things with it. As soon as you open it up, it's like you want to dig in there like a, like a kid in a candy store. Now for the multi sampler. This is the second sampler inside of Logic as opposed to the quick sampler where you can really only do one audio file. This one you can drop in a whole bunch of different audio files, lay them out across your entire keyboard and create an instrument out of it. Obviously it's, its main sort of use is creating a sampler instrument where you're going and recording something like a piano or strings instruments or any other type of live instrument and then laying it across the keyboard to turn it into a playable instrument inside of Logic. It's got a whole wide range of stuff I mean, any instrument you can think of. There's been a lot of times where I'll go inside of Logic and I'm like, hey, is this instrument in the sampler? And then I can use the search feature right up here if I go into the search filter and I can type things in. I mean, I think some of the ones that have surprised me is like, I can type in banjo and then look it up and there's actually a banjo inside of Logic is there's the banjo right there. So there's all kinds of things that if there's something where you're like, hey, I wonder if that's in there, you can go into the filter, see if it's there and look it up and then there you have that instrument. This one has been a bit controversial, um, especially in my space. I do a lot of things in the marching arts. Um, the difficult thing, I create a lot of custom samplers, a, a very large amount of custom samplers um, where I'm loading in my own samples that I've created and then trying to send them off to clients. And this one has a lot of issues with saving and creating your own custom samplers. It seems like Apple and Logic and MainStage, they, all of the uh, developers in there didn't necessarily have that in mind when creating this was a lot of user created samplers. It doesn't, it, it's really difficult to save samples and send them to people. Um, so that part does, you know, subtract some points from it on my side, but still has a lot of the benefits. I mean, I really like the clean updated design language inside of it. Um, it looks, it's really easy. There's not a lot of scary, crazy stuff on there as it's pretty straightforward to figure out the things you need. Um, but still has those things working against it. So with that said, sampler, I'm gonna drop it in the A tier. Could be S tier if that saving function in it was a little bit better, but I'm gonna keep it at A tier. Now, we are looking at the modeling synth, which is called Sculpture inside of Logic. This one's really unique and really interesting. This synth is, its use case is really about trying to emulate real live acoustic instruments. I would say it, it does have like not a super dated look, but it definitely has like a very early 2000s type of look to it um, as far as the interface. For sure, when you open it up, it's incredibly intimidating. There's all kinds of knobs and things, and it's not, I don't think it's laid out in the best way. It's still really confusing for me, even after all the years I've spent trying to create things in it. But you can still go over here to the presets. It does have a lot of interesting things. I mean, there's blown instruments, so you can get like a flute type of sound. So you can get that sort of blown sound out of it. So it's emulating like a blown instrument. And then it can also do plucked instruments. So you can get like a harp. You can get like a harp type of sound out of it. All kinds of other things in there. I will say one of the other things that really is going to help this instrument in this tier list right now. This has one of my favorite presets in all of Logic. I go right here. It's called Marble on a Journey. Really fun. I'm just going to push a key on this and you can listen. such a unique and really interesting preset. I still haven't found a place where I can use that in a project, but one day I hope to be able to find a place where I can use marble on a journey. It's so unique and so fun. As soon as I found that, instantly fell in love with this. Putting it on the tier list, it does have a really intimidating and scary interface that's hard to get into. It takes a lot of learning and there's a steep learning curve to figure all of it out. So with all those things said, I'm gonna take the modeling synth and I'm gonna put it on B tier. It's, it feels like it's a really deep treasure chest of stuff. If you get comfortable with it, you can create some really interesting textures and sounds, but 
It's not something that you can just like easily pull up and get really cool stuff out of it. We are looking at the Studio Horns. This is one of the newer additions uh, to Logic. I don't remember exactly when this came out, but it's still within the last like couple years, I think. This plugin is sampled brass instruments specifically for that more like studio pop sort of sound. Um, so this isn't necessarily like an orchestral brass library. It's more for like inside of the studio when you want brass on a pop track kind of thing. It's got all kinds of different instruments. It's got saxophones, it's got trumpets, it's, it's got trombones, um, still just one instrument at a time. So if you want all of those things, it does have patches of like sections or you could just do them as a single instrument. And then there's articulations. The articulation part of it is kind of a pain with logic. I personally have experienced some issues with trying to get the articulations to work right and to trigger correctly. So that part makes it a little bit annoying, but there's some cool things in here to help you dial in an interesting studio horn type of sound. So studio horns, pretty useful, definitely like it. Let's, let's give it a solid B tier. Next up, studio strings. Same one, another one came out at the same time as studio horns, gives you similar things. It's supposed to give you that sort of pop strings type of thing. Um, so once again, not necessarily an orchestral library, but this one actually works a little bit better in orchestral settings if you want that type of sound. Similar type of stuff gives you all the different string instruments, violins, violas, cellos, basses. You can do ensemble stuff with it. It's a little bit more of like a, a modern recreation of their older string sample libraries that they've had in the past inside of logic but still gives you some issues with articulations i struggle a bit with getting the articulations to trigger correctly in this often for me just wants to go back to sustain so kind of a pain but there is a lot of different articulations in here which is really cool gives you a lot of depth to the library so with that i actually am going to put the studio strings above the studio horns at a tier just because it is a little bit more useful than the studio horns because it can double as an orchestral library in certain settings all right let's look at another one that is once again kind of stretching what the software instruments inside of Logic are. This one's gonna be the test oscillator. You can find it if you go to the drop down menu and then go to utility and then test oscillator is right here. It does instantly make sound, so I, I pulled that down already, but still a really useful one. Um, I actually do end up using the test oscillator a lot to be able to uh, test speakers. Um, anytime I'm setting something up, I can use the test oscillator to check them live because you can send all kinds of different things through it. You can do a sine wave, uh, white noise, pink noise, square wave, changing the frequency of it. You can even have it do a sine sweep so that when you are testing speakers, just to make sure that you're getting a good full range out of them to go all the way from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Um, you can even change the range of the sine sweep. So this one does have actually a musical use to it as well, kind of like the Klopfgeist that we explored just a little bit. You can create one of those sub drop type of sounds doing like the do type of thing with it. It has a sine sweep. You do the start frequency wherever you want it. And then the ending frequency, you can pull it down. And then you just need to change the sweep mode. You can do logarithmic, make it really short and then trigger it. Oh, maybe that was a little too long. We can do like an even faster one and just get kind of like a sub drop sound. Test oscillator, kind of interesting, not super great. We'll, we'll give it a C tier. It's, it's not the most exciting, useful instrument in there, but it does have its use cases. Looking at Ultra Beat. So this is another one of the more old school uh, plugins from Logic, but still a great one. This is closer to that more like electronic drum kit type of thing, um, but this is the drum machine inside of Logic is kind of another one that's a little intimidating, has that old school design where they didn't quite, I think, figure out how to make a, an easy streamlined interface to interact with. Still has some cool stuff here. You've got all your samples. It's got a bunch of built-in drum kits that you can pick from, and it does have a sequencer here at the bottom so you can create your sequenced um, electronic drum beat that you're then gonna write some stuff to. Still pretty useful. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in here to really dial in the sounds if you wanna learn how to get into it. I like it a lot. I found some cool presets in here that work well to create some cool electronic beats for my projects. So with that ultra beat, I'm gonna give it A tier, pretty solid. So let's tackle this last group. These are all kind of in the same category. These are all emulations or modelings of vintage instruments that were really popular um, that they've now brought into Logic. 
Starting with the first one is going to be the B3 organ. So this is like a, a drawbar Hammond B3 organ. A lot of things in here gives you that organ type of sound. It really is what it looks like on the surface. If you want that organ sound, it's right there. It's really cool, a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it in here. It's got the rotor cabinet. It's really in depth, which is one of the great things about a lot of these Logic plugins is they're definitely in depth uh, versions of the things that you want. Not a lot to say about it. It's the B3 organ. It's great if that's the sound that you want. We'll call it a B tier just as an overall plugin. Still in this category, we are looking at the clavinet. Same kind of thing, another emulation of a really popular instrument. Um, it's the clavinet. It's got different presets to be able to create different types of sounds out of it. Kind of fits back into that one trick pony kind of thing. Is It, it really is what it says. It's a clavinet. With that said, clavinet. I'm gonna give it a C tier. I mean, honestly, just kind of being real with my own opinions, not super useful for me. I don't know if I've ever actually used that in my projects. It's just really not in the genre of music that I typically create. We're looking at the electric piano. Great one. I think this is actually one of the one of the more useful ones out of their vintage collection. Um, gives you really cool electric piano sounds. There's all kinds of things in here to be able to create like Wurlitzers and some of these other type of electric pianos. Um, whole bunch of different things in here that you'd really expect with an electric piano along with the second page just to dial in more things about it. So I definitely like it a lot. It ends up in a lot of my projects just because it's a cool electric piano, very classic, very iconic type of sound to put in a track. So with that, I'm going to give it A tier. Made it to the last one on the list. Last but not least is the vintage Mellotron. This one is also, I think, like a relative newcomer. It's not super recent, but I think within the last few years they added this. Once again, just a really cool emulation of the Mellotron, a very uh, old school sampled. It was like a tape sort of synthesizer where they had like looping tape that you could use to create cool textures um, where you've got different sounds that you can blend together. So you can choose a sound A and then a sound B and then blend it with this knob. So this one's actually pretty iconic. That's been used on a lot of tracks if you wanna sort of look and dive into the history of the Mellotron. It's a really cool sound. I think it's really interesting. There's some, you know, there's some parameters on here that you can mess with to be able to just, you know, change some things up with it a little bit. But with that said, Mellotron, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it an A tier. That rounds out the list say overall really solid ones. I actually didn't end up giving any of them F tier. I think maybe if I went back to this list and redid it after all these choices, I might move a couple of these down to the F tier. I think I might've been a little bit generous with some of these, um, but for sure, I think I feel really good with where that S tier is. Alchemy, the ES2 and the Retro Synth for sure are the goats of Logic. Um, next after that, I think I would say Ultra Beat and the Sampler is maybe like a in between S and A tier is like right in the middle, but just enough to be pushed back into the A tier. I mean, you can't really go wrong with a lot of these. If you just look at the wide breadth of options that comes in Logic, I think it's awesome. I mean, you, you can open up Logic and really not be missing anything because you can get started right away with everything that you need. You got stuff to create beats, whether it's it's electronic drums or acoustic drums. You've got all kinds of synthesizers. You've got stuff for sound design. You've got stuff for emulating really classic synthesizer type of sounds that is really unique to this DAW that you don't really get with a lot of other DAWs. There it is. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on the tier list of where things placed, if there's something that you guys would move somewhere else. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.